the power of God's grace. Today we're going to consider a rich and profound passage from the book of Titus. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. This passage beautifully encapsulates the transformative power of God's grace and its implications for our lives. Titus 2, 11 to 14. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people, and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. The Revelation of Grace Titus 2.11 For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. The first thing we need to grasp is the revelation of God's grace. The Greek word for grace here is charis, which signifies favour, kindness and a gift freely given. This grace has appeared manifesting in the person of Jesus Christ and it brings salvation that is available to everyone who will believe. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. Grace is unmerited favour from God. Imagine a prisoner on death row receiving a pardon he didn't earn and being set free. That's what grace does for us. It sets us free from the penalty of sin and it's something that we don't deserve. John Piper said, Grace is not simply leniency when we have sinned. Grace is the enabling gift of God not to, to sin. Grace is power, not just pardon. The Instruction of Grace Titus chapter 2 verse 12 And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness and devotion to God. Grace instructs us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. The Greek word for instructed is paideo, meaning to train or educate. Grace teaches us to say no to sin and yes to godly living. Remember Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Grace not only saves, it also transforms. It's like a mentor guiding us away from destructive habits and leading us towards a life that pleases God. Imagine a personal trainer helping someone overcome unhealthy habits and adopt a healthier lifestyle. As Samuel Johnson once said, the true measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him absolutely no good. The Hope of Glory Titus chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ will be revealed, he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. Let's focus on the hope and future aspect of grace. The Greek word for hope is elpis, which denotes a confident expectation. And we eagerly await the return of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our redemption. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we've been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Grace gives us a glorious hope for the future. Imagine the bride eagerly preparing for her wedding day, filled with anticipation and joy. 
That's how we should await Christ's return. To quote John MacArthur, hope is the anchor of the soul, the stimulus to action and the incentive to achieve. The Commitment to Good Deeds Titus chapter 2 verse 14 He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. Grace compels us to live out our faith through good deeds. The Greek word for commitment is periousios, which means a special possession or a people that are set apart. We are called to be zealous for good works as an expression of our gratitude for God's grace. James chapter 2 verse 17 So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Our commitment to good deeds is a natural response to the grace that we have received. Consider a person who receives a life-saving organ transplant. Their gratitude motivates them to live a life that honours the gift that they have been given. In the words of John Wesley, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. In conclusion, Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14 highlight the profound impact of God's grace in our lives. It reveals God's favour. It instructs us in righteous living. It gives us glorious hope for the future and compels us to commit good deeds to serve our Lord and Saviour. This transformative grace, it calls us to live differently, a life that is fully committed to God and serving our Lord and Saviour. This week, Reflect on how God's grace has impacted your life. Are you living in the reality of his grace? Are you renouncing ungodliness? And are you holding on to the hope of Christ's return? Seek his guidance and let his grace transform every aspect of your life. Commit to doing good deeds as an expression of your faith and your gratitude. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for the amazing grace that saves, instructs and gives hope. Help us to live in the fullness of your grace, turning away from sin and embracing a life devoted to you. May we eagerly await the return of our Saviour and live each day in the light of that hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, go forth this week with a renewed sense of God's grace in your life committed to living for his glory. May God bless you abundantly in all that you do. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to click on the like, subscribe and notify buttons before you go. And remember, you can connect with us at our website, estreelium.church. You can also listen to our audio podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music or Spotify. May you be truly transformed by the word of God. May God bless you and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.